So this video, I'm going to talk about the built-in map and filter function. So what is a map? Well, a map is a way of using a function on every item in an array. Okay. So, oops, I put an MPA. So let's, let's imagine, for example, list, a list is a type of array, right? And we want to perform a function on every item inside of a list, right? Well, the normal way that we do it is we define a function. So let's say squared, right? Because I'd like to square an, an item, right? And we're going to say that we want to return x times x, which is x squared, right? The normal way of doing this for an entire list. So let's make a list. We'll call it numbers. We'll say it's equal to 6 six, five, seven, eight, two, six, three, right? We're going to say it's equal to that, yeah? Next off, we need to make an empty list. So we'll say num numbers two, we'll call it numbers two, actually. Is empty it starts off empty why does it start off empty because we have to add all of these items in numbers one to this list in a for loop so I'll make the for loop we'll say for num which represents number in numbers the list numbers we want to do the following right we want to make a value called a num which means a shorthand for a number I'm going to say that it's equal to the squared version of num so we're going to say for every single item inside of this we want to apply this function to that item and then we want to assign that value that we get returned from this function to a variable right and then what we're going to do is we're going to say numbers two dot append a num right and by doing this, we're going to append each item to numbers two. So we're going to get the squared value appended to numbers two, right? Notice that this doesn't actually return anything. So in order to see what numbers two is, we're going to have to print numbers two at the end of this, right? And let's run that. Let's see how that goes. Okay, so you see that's worked, but one complaint I can make is that probably took me maybe 20 to 30 seconds to do. How many lines of code did I need? Well, I needed to use two lines of code here for some very simple uh, uh, calculation there. And I had to use four lines of code here, right? I didn't actually have to use five lines of code here. I didn't have to print that number to actually assign this to this list. So it's just these four here. And these two here plus the list but we won't count the list so it, it took me six lines of code in order to do this right but wouldn't it be easier if i could just say look just do this function on every single item of the list yeah well we can and we can do that by using the inbuilt map function this works on all uh, iterable arrays not just lists so we'll say that we want to use the map function by using the map keyword map is inbuilt into Python by the way and the function we want to use is squared and the first argument is the function that we want to use and then the lists the list that we want to apply this function to is numbers right so we want to we are saying we want to apply this function to every item in this list right so I can do that but if I do that, I'll just get a map object returned to me. So I obviously need to return this to something, right? So I'm going to say print. Well, actually, I could probably just use list. If I can't, I'll use print. So we'll say list of map. Oops. And we'll say squared and numbers, right? So I'm going to convert this map to a list. And we should be able to get that out if we enter that. And you can see that this list is the same as the 
numbers to list, right? Which shows that this squared function has been applied to every single number in the list. You'll notice that I've only used three lines of code here, yeah? The initial definition defining of a function, which is two lines of code, and then this here. So you can quite easily see that I've used half the code, right? If I'm writing, you know, hundreds of throwaway functions in one file, which I probably wouldn't be, but let's say, let's say I am. I've now saved myself 300 lines of code. That's actually a lot of lines of code over time. So it's worth doing. Let's say I'm not happy with this. Let's say I'm not going to use this squared uh, function ever again, right? I'm just going to use this once for this one list. Okay, that's not a problem. We can do this all in one line of code. We can say list, we can say map, and then as a function, we can put in a lambda as an argument, as a function argument, right? And we're going to say lambda x, and we're going to say x times x is the return value, which is the same return value in squared, okay? So we pretty much just define squared here, all on the same line, right? And then we just use our numbers list once again. And when I run that, I get the same list. So you can see here, I'm using a six of the lines that I needed to use before, right? If I was using completely throwaway uh, functions that I didn't need to define or ever repeat, and I was using a hundred different ones in one file, I've now done a sixth of the work. I'm writing a hundred lines of code instead of 600, right? That's the whole point of this function. It's just so that you can do things uh, in a much more concise way, right? This will work over other iterable arrays, not just over uh, lists. And I can get a, like a returned list of that. So we'll say, for example, dict1, right? We'll make a dictionary quickly. And we'll make a key er the value 22 make another key L with a value of 9, right? We're going to make a list of the keys inside of that. So we're going to say lambda x, and we're just going to simply return x. We're just simply going to return the key in numbers, right? Now, don't worry if this isn't so, so complicated. If you want to do more with dictionaries, you can. I'm just showing that it's possible to return these values and to use a map with you know other types of iterables and you can see it's returned you know oops i've used that on numbers whoops i needed to use it on dict1 sorry about that so if i use it on dict1 i basura if i use it on dict1 you'll see that i get the two keys er and l right quite simple yeah and what this shows is that i can actually you know iterate over every single item in a dictionary. I could probably get these values some other way with a lambda, but I'm not going to go there. I'm just simply demonstrating that you can use this map function with all kinds of iterables, right? It's just a better way of doing things if you're not going to reuse the function. Right. Let's move on to the next. So the thing that I'm going to move on to now is filters. Another way of making your life easier by filtering out lists and arrays. So let's say, for example, I don't know, I want to find every single number in this numbers uh, list, and I want to return a list of all the numbers inside of it that are more than the value 5, right? So I should expect to get the value 6 twice, followed by the value 7, the value 8, and then the value 6, right? But me looking at that and doing comparisons with a for loop, you know, it's quite a long-winded process. So I'd like to be able to do it all just in one uh, in one line. So we already have the numbers list defined. And in order for me to return a list, you know, with just values over five, I use the filter keyword. And then once again, I just use the function, right? If I, if I want to use a function. I can actually just filter uh, whatever I want. So I'm going to say lambda, right? I'm going to say lambda x, where x is more than 5, okay? 
and then we are going to apply that to the uh, the actual array, the list itself. Sorry, that was badly explained. So what we're doing, you need you do need a, a function for a filter. So we're applying this this function here with the filter to numbers. And what this function is doing is it's a filter function and it says if x is more than five then show me x right show me x from this list okay and we get six six seven eight and six in the order that they appear in the list and the right amount of uh, the items that we need this saves me from doing a big bunch of for loops and from making a uh, a function right so it just saves me a lot of time to do this I can also filter null values out of lists so let's say I make oh I don't know a name list right and we put a few names in this name list so we'll say Kavinda uh, Malaga I think Malaga is actually a place in Spain and then we have an empty uh, an empty string there another empty string here put another name Tiffany Jeremy and then we put another empty string let's say we just don't want these empty strings right let's say we want to filter out all of these empty strings well we can through the same method we can get a new list and we say list filter we're gonna make a lambda again um, we're going to say, oh, actually, we don't need a lambda. Sorry, sorry, I don't need a lambda for that. Function or none here. So, non non refers to values or items in a list or an array that aren't, aren't, aren't of any value, that are either empty strings or zero or brackets or whatever, just empty or none, right? And then an iterable, as it says there, which will be this list, name list, right? Name list will be our new iterable here. And I should get everything that's not null if I actually define the list first. So here we get Kavinda, Malaga, Tiffany, and Jeremy. And you can see that all of these empty strings have been removed. So it filters out everything that isn't of value none, okay? So we want a function when we're using filter that either filters out values, so obviously it'll have a comparison between x and some other value, or might be might have two values, whatever. Yeah, it's possible to do it with two values, but I won't get into that. Or we can use the non value, um, which means it'll filter out anything that's an invalid or a non value. Okay. I'm just going to list all the non values here and then I'll go over everything. So, non refers to the following, right? So, it refers to, well, non, which is in itself uh, a type, zero, an empty string, 0, 0.0, zero j and enclose brackets of any kind or parenthesis of any kind these squiggly brackets and also the value false right it refers to all of these okay and I'll show you what I mean by non is equal to non so we'll make a variable we'll call it L okay and we'll say L is equal to none and then we'll print L Quite simple, and we just get none coming out. None is actually a data type that refers to there's nothing here, right? But it'll you'll still get none printed out, even though it should just print out nothing, right? So basically, when you apply this none uh, as a filter, any of these values, if the value is zero, if the value is you know these empty strings, 0, 0, 0 0.00j this bracket, any any of these values won't appear. I'll actually, you know what, I'll demonstrate this. I'll uh, I'll say mix list, right? And we'll say that it's got three, seven, empty string, zero, 22. Then it's got that, it's 
got another one of them. Hello. Right. We'll apply it again. We'll say list filter none mix list. You'll actually see we apply it to this list that we only get three, seven, twenty-two, and hello. That's because the empty string is defined as being none. The any empty brackets are defined as being none, so they're definitely not going to be there. And the value zero is also defined as being none, right? That's all there really is to it, you know. These functions, these inbuilt functions in Python, are just here to make our lives easier. And once you comprehend them, you can do things in a more concise way. For example, just using one line here. So let's go over this again. We've um, made a function here, made a list, made an empty list, and then we've made a for loop so that we can apply this function to every item in numbers, the numbers list, and append it to this second list so that we can square all the items in here and have a list full of all those values, right? And we print it out here. We show that you can save time um, simply by having a, using the map keyword, using the function that we want to apply to a list or an array, and it will apply that function to every single item in that array. And if we use the keyword list and put, you know, the map, the map function as an argument with all this in it, we'll actually get a list of all those values squared, right? You can do the same here, but you don't actually need to declare an outright, you know, function. You can actually just make the function a lambda here. It's forgettable if you're never going to use it again. You can do all of this apart from the initial list declaration in one line of code. You can do this with a dictionary. You can also do it with tuples or, you know, whatever uh, iterable array that you want. You can also filter items, okay? So we use the list func key built-in function first. And as an argument, we use the filter built-in function. And we use a function that's like a, a comparable function that allows you to filter items. So here it's saying any instance of x where x is over 5. And then we, you know, have our iterable as the second argument. And as you can see, uh, where was it when we go up here? We filtered all of those items out of numbers. So the 5, the 2, the, and the 3 don't appear. Only the items that are more than 5 appear because of this filtering function here. We can also use this filter function uh, to filter out any items that are just non-items, non which seems to be completely backwards logic to this because you here you actually filter out items that are more than five, whereas here you filter out items that are this as well, are non, right? Oh, it's the same logic, sorry. That are non, right? So these here are classified as non-values, empty strings like this. So when I return this, we only get Kavinda, Malaga, Tiffany, and Jeremy. If you look at L here and we give it a non-value, we can print that out as a non-value, right? It should really just print out nothing, but it's basically saying that this isn't a value. It's a value of non, non-existent value, right? Here I make a list with a bunch of mixed values, but a lot of these non-values that I've listed here. So for example, um, an empty string is a non-value, a zero integer is a non-value, uh, these square empty square brackets are a non-value. When we filter that out, we only get 3, 7, 22, and hello, because everything else in the list is a non-value, right? That's it really. Go over this in your own time, have a few practices. Uh, thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed.